Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Sean Driscoll. Sean, I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm excited to learn more about what you're working on. He is the president at Driscoll Solutions. Um, Driscoll Organizational Solutions helps companies ensure their unique way of creating, delivering, and capturing value exceeds customer expectations. <laughs> So we're going to be talking a lot about consulting, growth-focused consulting, innovation-focused consulting, process improvement consulting, but essentially making us better than we are today and making our enterprises run more smoothly. But before we get there, Sean, tell us a little bit about you and your career. Sure. I, um, I'm an innovative, curious person. I, I'm always looking for the next big, biggest challenge. Um, to me, I, innovation is the uh, universe of ideation put to work. And so that's key to me. Um, I like big ideas, but um, I like ones that are useful. I think my eclectic background speaks to that. So U.S. Marine, uh, operations executive in manufacturing, commercial banker, and then got into consulting to kind of put all that experience and knowledge to work. So, I mean, it's really interesting now I mean, when I hear about um, all the things that you've done in the past, I... Uh, you mentioned you went to Ohio State, but you're now in North Carolina, and you, you're the president of Driscoll Solutions. So tell me a little bit more about what you and the team are up to at Driscoll. Over the last decade or so, I've really delved into strategy um, because that goes along with you know putting these ideas to work. Um, all my clients need the strategy help, but understanding the big picture helps be more effective uh, in getting the results that they want. Uh, I'm speaking with several companies on uh, establishing or improving capabilities in manufacturing. Um, next week, I'll be on a panel uh, discussing exit strategies for mid-sized to small firms or closely held businesses. Uh, so it's it's helping companies uh, get a better footing after the pandemic. Uh, there's still a lot of labor and supply chain issues, uh, and helping them deal with the you know, with the capabilities that they have in growing that. I know that there's not a shortage of challenges that enterprises face, and it's kind of an interesting one. I mean, I, I would say that the focus areas, the areas where they really need help shifts at, at various points. W what are you seeing are kind of the hot button issues right now for your customers? So uh, they, they're able to tap into a, a different workforce, but then there's people who've never been in manufacturing. So getting uh, these people up to speed, getting them the capabilities that they need, um, developing people, uh, showing them how to develop others or how to, to develop a team. So getting that, that organization to mature uh, as they, um, you know, they, they use the best uh, of what they have. Uh, and then eventually we know that, you know, the cycles of business that, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be uh, some people out there uh, that they can start tapping into and bringing in. But, you know, help, this will help them in the future, too. So when they start bringing people on board, they'll have a program that can quickly get people up to speed, uh, be much more effective, much quicker. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, that's going to be the challenge. A lot of people I hear are hoping that 2024 is a year of growth and growth comes organizational shifts and changes. So, you know, I, I imagine a lot of these topics are going to be paramount and top of mind for these folks. But you know, one of the things I've noticed, Sean, over the years, and I don't know if it's true about you, is that a lot of folks that gravitate to these kind of strategic areas and, and really find that this is the area where they thrive and, and really are able to help really are natural problem solvers. Like they're, they're people that like, they want to find the answer to things. So tell me a little bit about what drives you and, and really motivates you to really build out, you know, consulting and the solutions that you and the Driscoll team do. We help uh, leaders make connections that they, they might not see themselves um, or help give um, a little bit more horsepower to that. Uh, it's a lot of uh, leaders are looking for that easy button. And then unfortunately, um, that has a whole host of problems in and of itself. Um, you know, what I call productized solutions, uh, you know, they'd like to just kind of adopt that and put that in place. but um, you know, when you approach a problem or an opportunity with a solution already in hand, you know, you're assuming a lot uh, and then you start creating resistance with your employees. Uh, yeah. So we, we help them kind of 
get back to what their core uh, capabilities are and then to build from there instead of coming in and overlaying something and, and totally transforming the business. Now, I know that uh, one of the things that I was looking at about Driscoll is that you try to avoid in some ways, productizing solutions that uh, you really look at it and look at the challenge for what it is and then assess the the right way of approaching that. Tell me a little bit more about that kind of methodology. Well, you know, if, if uh, a business is a going concern, so they're already doing some things successfully. Uh, and sometimes they might just be missing a key piece here or there. So we want to go in and find out how do we bridge the gap between where they're at and where they want to be. And then we start um, developing the people that they have, or sometimes you bring in somebody who has an expertise that the organization doesn't. Then you develop your own solution. Uh, the, the thing I found out over my career is you can't change a culture. You can't form a culture unless that group of people goes through a challenge together. Mm. So if you adopt something and say, hey, just start doing things this way, you've just uh, lost the opportunity to actually change the, the culture. Um, the other thing is, is that you, you can't uh, directly change the culture. People will decide for themselves and, and as a group what things they want to adopt to get through that challenge. As a leader, you want to create the best environment for them and help them make the best choices when it comes to making decisions and going down a certain path. That is a tremendous insight you have there, Sean. I, I think that a lot of folks are going into companies and trying to support them to shift cultures without that mindset. I think that's a really, really valuable insight for folks to think through. But I mean, Sean, clearly 2024 is going to be another year where there's going to be a lot of shifts and changes. What's on the docket for you and the team? And and what do you see out there as some of the big issues that we ought to be thinking about? Well, there's going to be consolidation. Uh, so I'm looking at the merger and acquisition market uh, and working with some of those businesses that help out with that. Um, so who's going to be the winner in that? Um, the other thing is technology. So we hear this big thing about AI. Uh, to me, it's people-centered adoption of technology is the best way to go. Use your subject matter experts and leverage it in a way that's meaningful for your, for your business. So technology could be one of those productized solutions. Mm. Um, what, what I'm finding is that these platforms for AI are great and people are kind of playing around with them. Um, but it's not until you get a subject matter expert that learns that, that can apply that inside a business, will that business actually reap some benefits from it. Mm. But there's a, there's kind of a secondary uh, industry or, um, you know, different kind of a cottage industry of these subject matter experts that are using AI and other technologies uh, to specifically for, for in, you know, certain types of industries, uh, like FinTech is one of those for, for uh, banking uh, and manufacturing, yeah. it's automated systems, uh, blockchain and those types of things. But just to adopt blockchain or just to digitize your organization for the sake of doing that, you don't know what the results are going to be. Uh, you might even go way off your course of, you know, where your customer base is or where your uh, niche is. One of the things that certainly has been apparent in some of the AI solutions is that uh, people that don't really know what they're looking up will be amazed at some of the results. And then if you put a person that knows what the results actually are, you know, just kind of giving you examples of like uh, using any of these generative AI text tools, you'll realize that 90% of the, the text is just copied from from an author and, and uh, he's like, yes, it's, it's very knowledgeable. Yes. He's a very, he's a, he's a Nobel winning economist. And of course he knows, he knows what his book was about. You know, you don't want to uh, plagiarize. So I was going to say, I, there's a, an executive, a CEO who uh, somebody set him up with chat GBT uh, and he's now using it to communicate to the, to the entire organization. So um, he tested it out once and sent it to the communications department. They're like, this is really good. He's like, well, that's fantastic. Now I've just kind of cut, you know, part of this out. I know what I want to say. This software is going to help me. So that that's, I think, it's a really good example of what we're going to see going forward in a lot of different areas. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, Sean, if someone wanted to learn more about you and what Driscoll Solutions is working on, where's the best place to find you? Well, you can contact me in a lot of different ways. Uh, DriscollSolutions.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. 
uh, or you could just send me an email uh, at Sean uh, at DriscollSolutions.com and uh, we can start up a conversation. Excellent. Well, Sean, thank you so much for being on the show today. We've been talking with Sean Driscoll. He's the president at Driscoll Solutions. Uh, they work on really a lot of great areas to support businesses and to really help them move forward. Their services include strategic planning and execution, process improvement, business reimagination, and people-focused capital investment. And we've been talking uh, a lot about change and uh, you know, one of the things that really stuck out for me in the conversation, Sean, is that idea that you really need to go through a shared challenge to change a culture. It's a wonderful idea and uh, something I think that's really valuable for folks to take away from, from this conversation today, uh, as well as this idea that you need to balance people and talent expertise uh, with the thing, the way you're, you're adopting technology. Make sure that you bring that expertise together with the new tools so, so that you can make sure that you're truly getting efficiencies in a, in a meaningful, meaningful way. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show today, and we look forward to having you back. Well, thank you for having me.